what do you have need of? You know, when, when, when the Lord brought that question to my heart, um, it's so simple, right? It, we, we, we all have this, this, um, rhythm with father of, of whether it's, whether it's circumstances, situations, um, an actual, what we consider need of some sort, um, or it's just the desire of our heart. All of those things go through our, our existence, our being from a place of an, a need, which sparks a question that is, is desiring an answer, right? And the Lord brought this question, this uh, verse to my heart, Philippians four, um, verses 11 through three. And, it, and, and yes, she was talking, uh, no, he's not. I'm sorry. It wasn't Yeshua. It was Paul. I'm not saying this out of need for I have learned to be content regardless of my circumstances. I know how to live humbly and I know how to abound. I am accustomed to any and every situation to being filled and being hungry to having plenty and having need. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And when he brought that, that verse to my heart, I was suddenly aware of how we um, not only um, define need, but the circumstances and situations and how we equate those things as either needs or answers to those needs. And, and right now, even in the few things that people have shared, um, uh, even this morning, People are, many of us are going through circumstances and situations. We're in and out or through the process of circumstances and situations are positioning our heart to understand, right? We, we choose in, in when we're dealing with, whether it's questions, circumstances, situations, we question, we position our heart to understand what's going on to find the answer, to find joy, to be thankful, to trust, to have faith, to believe, to find truth, to find direction. I could go on and on, you name it, right? Because in the experience of what we we define as a need, there is an answer to that need. There is an, there is an answer, there is a solution, there is a a response to the question of the need. But often we do that through our understanding of father. Sometimes we do it out of rote uh, reaction response, and we don't even engage father's heart about any of it. We just go through what we know. But in those times that we engage father in our understanding of him, we oftentimes come to the answer or the solution based on what father's done in the past, how he speaks, how he reveals des des his desires, even using his character and nature as a measuring stick to understand or to see. And I'm not saying that any of that is wrong or incorrect or lacking or any of that. But I'd like to propose something that we already know, and yet we don't. So Father's question was, what do you have need of? And it was, and the question was so pure that it, I could feel myself, even in his question, my whole entire being answered it. Because even the question, when we see that question spoken of, especially in the New Testament, oftentimes it's around or centered around our reaction response of staying in joy, staying in faith, staying in trust, staying in truth, decreeing and declaring and all of those things that are not wrong, they're absolutely wonderful. 
But in father's questions, what do you have need of? Suddenly the answer came flooding out of me. The only need is face to face. The only need is face to face. The only need is, uh, I forget who, who said it. I think it was, was Debbie. That place of just being still with father. And it, it doesn't even require inactivity. It just requires a turning in. It requires that when you feel that small voice, when you feel that flutter, just turning in. For no other answer than the very fulfillment of face-to-face. -face. The very expansion of face-to-face. -face. And in that... All need becomes irrelevant because the only thing that 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 captures our attention, that capture captures our desire, our our need, if you will, is face to face. We simply need face to face for face to face because it begins to be that perfect mirror that perfect reflection of Father's glory in you, in me, in the earth. And that face-to-face, -face, that actual position of, if I can say it like this, Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and me, who you, it becomes the answer to everything. It becomes the, the, the expression of every answer, of every fulfilling thing. of every, We become, we are, and I don't mean to use the word become in a you're not already place. It's not that. But you become the answer to the question. You become the answer to the need. Just because of your being, I am in the face-to-face. So it's not the it's not the 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 um the earth experience the the na natural realm experience the time realm experience you're actually bringing face to face the mirror of that into the created realm that is the answer to the need and I know that I know we know that. We know that. But what happens when our being is so quieted in that place in oneness with spirit that the natural um, expressions of what we would consider need become so quieted because face to face is the place that you and I live from, because we know in that place of oneness, the answer floods out of us. It actually comes out of it in nourishment, in enlightenment, in expansion. Not only for you and I, but for every circumstance and situation. That is why when Kathy was talking about her group, uh, her Ascension group, joining together, standing in that place and actually speaking to the wind, to the hurricane, it immediately relaxed and rested. And it was an, a very um, notable rest that came upon it. Because when you and I are in that place of oneness, a face-to-face -face with Father, I am expands out of us. Not because we're not it yet and we're just learning how to deal with it. it it's all here. I and my Father are one. And it's not just a partial oneness. Oftentimes we see it that way because we've not experienced 
certain aspects of our I amness. And so because it's not in our conscious awareness or experience, we have an unspoken framework, if I could say it like that, that it doesn't exist in me. But that's not true. It's all here. It's all in us, desiring, longing to be expressed out of us. And the only way through to do that is through I am, through face-to-face -face oneness. So as I, as I was sitting with Father about that and about what he wanted to do with that this morning, I was sitting in that place and he showed me a veil. He showed me a veil. And I asked him, I said, well, what do you want me to do about with that veil? And he said, I want you to bring the group through the veil. Step beyond it and allow me to expand your heart, expand your understanding of what is I am, what is face to face. Because that veil has limited, it's been used to limit our understanding of our I amness.